Ooh, morning, Trainiacs. Um, as you can see, crap. <laughs> Winter is now upon us, and every single year people start asking, well, how do you dress for winter? Living in Winnipeg, i.e. Winterpeg, I am a certified expert in how to dress for the cold. Now, it's not as tough as you might think. I have actually bike commuted all year round, all the way down to minus 40 Celsius. It's the same Celsius and Fahrenheit at that point. And I actually found it warmer to bike commute than to drive because you actually warm yourself up. So dressing for the winter requires you purchasing a little bit of gear, but it's quite pleasant once you get going. So today I'm gonna give you like the full system of how to dress hands, feet, legs, torso, head, for a whole bunch of different temperatures depending on how cold you're willing to run and where you live. You hear that? sound of winter running. So let's start off with saying that you do not need spikes or coils or yak tracks or anything on your feet. That's usually the first question that I get and very unnecessary. What I've actually found is that more often than not, they make running in the winter worse because what they do is First, they alter your gait, and then things like coils, they just slip on ice. They tend not, I'm on ice right now. No coils, totally fine. Whereas coils, they slip. Studs, on the other hand, like spikes, those work totally fine on ice, but, other than that, it alters your gait. It's less comfortable. So you're much more likely to get an injury and even maybe slip on something you shouldn't be running on anyway. Because you think, oh, I got these coils or I got these studs. So just starting first with shoes, I just have on normal runners. What I do have is a pair of Nikes that do have a little bit of tread on the bottom. What you don't want is a pair of shoes that are just like completely flat with no tread, real road racing shoes. Like Atreyu, I love you guys. You're not great for the winter. The Nike Vaporfly 4%, my favorite runners, actually, I might be tied with the new Atreyus. Anyway, those are too flat. You want a little bit of tread at most. People from our run crew have gone to trail shoes, and that's the very most that they'd end up using. Basically, normal runners. Next thing is how to dress. Specifically, the layering. This is what's critical. And in this case, less is more. You really don't want to be sweating when you're running in the winter. Because what happens when you sweat is it's all fine and dandy when you're running just normally and actually moving. But then as soon as you stop for cars or you slow down or you have to wait outside before you can get in somewhere, you are going to freeze. So the key is to dress so that like, you're kind of cold when you start and then you warm up. Now, of course, most people are going to sweat and you're gonna sweat a little bit, but how do you dress so that you don't turn into the shining frozen in a snowbank somewhere? There's two main points. 
First, merino wool as the base layer, and then wind protection on the shell. And that is the key to your legs and to your torso. Because merino wool, it stays warm even when it gets a little sweaty. And then, to make sure that, that little bit of sweat that accumulates doesn't turn into frozen nipple icicles, you keep the wind off your body with a wind shell on the outside. So I tell you what, I'm gonna finish this workout and then when we get back, I'm gonna give you the layering system that has allowed me to ride and run all throughout the year all the way down to frozen tundra minus 40 levels. We're looking at about a 45 minute run and ended with no gloves on. This is uh, I gotta do the conversion. Minus six Celsius, about 20 Fahrenheit. Ended with no gloves. So you need a lot less than you think. Let me go inside and I'll give you an example of all the accoutrements of gloves, of mitts, neck gaiters, of hats, beanies as you Americans like to call it, and uh, what that breakdown is for temperature. So insulation, wind protection, accessories. We'll just touch on all these a little bit. On a day like today, right around freezing, what I'll have on the top is a merino wool base layer. And that base layer, depending on how windy it is, how cold it is, it might be something as thin as just a really, really thin merino wool base layer, as thick as a really, really thick, very dense merino wool base layer. As it gets colder, essentially I just get thicker and thicker base layers. Very, very coldest, we're talking minus 20 Celsius. Let's see what that is Fahrenheit. I will add just a thick hoodie on top of the base layer, in between the base layer and the wind shell. That is almost too cold for me to be running in. You won't see me out too much below minus 20 or 25. On the bottom, same exact thing. I'll have a merino wool base layer. You saw that today I had nothing but a merino wool like capris that were halfway down the calf and then a pair of shorts on over top of that. As it gets colder, that'll expand to full length merino wool as a base layer. I'll still maybe have shorts. I will have windproof shorts to protect my dirty bits and then maybe a pair of shorts on over top of that. But the premise is still the same. It's merino on the skin and then wind over top. As it gets colder and colder, I'll expand from where, you know, it's just slightly cold, like a little bit above freezing where I'm just using a merino wool base layer and no shell over top to today where I'll have a cycling shell over top of that because that's gonna take away the wind. I like a cycling shell because it protects from the wind really well and it has just a little bit of insulation on the inside allowing you to have something really thin on under this. So this cycling shell will probably run in all the way down to minus 20 or 25. Again, let's figure out what that is in Fahrenheit and I'll just get thicker and thicker base layers. At around minus 15, minus 20 Celsius Fahrenheit, I will add a second full pair of pants as a wind shell over top of my merino wool base layer on the legs. Again, same sort of premise to what the cycling shell is. It's windproof on the outside. It is slightly insulated on the inside. At the very, 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 very coldest, this is like where I say, you know what? Most people aren't going to want to run in this. I will put on a windproof jacket. Now getting the right windproof insulated winter coat is critical. This is a Primaloft North Face jacket. Whatever Primaloft you have, I don't care what the manufacturer is, Primaloft is great because it's a 
synthetic material that it doesn't stink when it gets sweaty. It also doesn't get cold when it gets sweaty. I have ran in this all the way down to about minus 27 or 30, finished the run and found out that on my chest, it was just a wall of ice, but I was still warm. And then as far as the accessories go, that's where things get fancier. On my feet, that's really simple. I'll use a thin, normal running sock, and maybe at that minus 15 and lower, I'll put on a thicker merino wool sock. On the shoes, maybe once a year, if it's really windy, I'll put a little piece of duct tape on over the toe to keep the wind from coming in. But as far as layering all of the accessories, getting your extremities warm, a basic running toque, what incorrect people might refer to as a beanie, this is gonna last me most of the winter. At its very coldest, I might start layering on a buff just to get the neck to stay warm and then you can go like this. But usually what happens is as you start moving, as long as it's not too windy, you're able to bring this down a fair bit. When it gets really, really cold, what I'll have is again, insulated on the inside, windproof on the outside, a full, I actually just get this from snowmobile stores. And if it's extra, extra cold, put the beanie on over top. Simple as that. Put on a pair of glasses that are your normal running glasses so that they have a little bit of air movement so it doesn't frost up and you are good to go as far as your head is concerned. Hands, that's a little more personal. You saw me running in nothing but these thin little gloves. I'll run in these as long as it's not very windy. When it starts getting windy, I'll look for something like a split finger cycling glove. These here allow the fingers to warm each other up and it allows you a little bit of dexterity to move around. At its very, very coldest, again, we're talking minus 25 Celsius or that Fahrenheit and colder, I will put on thick snowmobile split finger cycling gloves. Wind and insulation. Pro tip that I'll give you is to try this out. And you wanna do this on shorter runs and gradually build up longer and longer. If you find that your hands are really, really cold, you can put a pair of rubber gloves, latex gloves, surgical gloves, on underneath your gloves. Whatever gloves you've got, this ends up basically keeping the wind out a little bit, but more than anything, it keeps that dampness in. It's kind of like a wetsuit for your hands. Trick to this is that you don't want to stop too much because your hands get so, so sweaty. And if you stop for a long period of time, these get really clammy and you might lose digits. I mean, I've never seen anyone lose digits, but I mean, this actually works. I've done this with long, long bike rides outside and it's not too bad. Now, before you go, this video is related to a series of blog posts that virtualrun.world hired me to do about how to train in the winter, how to select a treadmill so that if you wanna run inside, you can, how to set up a home gym that isn't gonna cost you several thousand dollars like this how to dress for and how to actually bike throughout the winter, how to keep training throughout the winter fairly easily without a huge amount of cost and without freezing your little Terrans off. So if you wanna check that out at virtualrun.world, you can, I'll put a link in the description below to all of the blog posts that we did with them for running, biking, setting up your home gym, selecting a treadmill, all those things. And if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.